Hi friends, it's Kathy from Easy Sunday Club and in today's video, we're going to discuss how to choose the right paper to print your greeting card. Obviously, this is a video for those of you who want to start your own greeting card business, not if you're just doing for fun. So you're thinking, why did I pick such a boring topic? Why can't you just go to Amazon or your paper store, buy a rim of white cardstock and call it a day? If you started your research already, you might notice that shopping for cardstock feels a little bit like shopping for a white paint at the paint store. You just want to repaint your living room white. Like, why are there over 200 shades of white paint out there? Well, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Shopping for cardstock is not as complicated, but I do think it requires a little bit of thought if you want to create a high quality product that leaves a good first impression. And the reason why I say that is because greeting card is something that people are going to buy over and over again because it is something that they give away. So if they like what they see in the first time, they may come back for more. Obviously having a good design helps too, but when they look and feel the cardstock in their hands, I think it helps to stand out a little bit from the Target or drugstore greeting cards that you can buy out there. And after all, you're a maker's business, right? So you want to be proud of things that you are putting out there in the world. So in this video, I'm going to walk through four categories of cardstock. Obviously, there are a lot more out there, but I've narrowed it down to four to give you a few options, but also not to overwhelm you. I've experimented with all these paper types over the last three and a half years that sold greeting cards. So I can tell you kind of my personal take, my the pros and cons, and give you suggestions on what each of these cards are best for. And before I get into it, don't skip the next part because I want to tell you three things that you should consider when shopping for a greeting card paper. The first one is the weight. In this context, we are talking about the cover weight, which refers to thicker paper like cardstock type of weight. And ideal weight for cardstock for greeting card is 100 to 100 pound weight. I have ultimately settled on 110 pounds because it feels premium, but it's still easy enough to cut and score. The weight is also important to know because you wanna make sure that the printer you're using to print the greeting card can handle the paper weight. What that means is when you are feeding multiple sheets of cardstock through your printer auto feeder, that it's gonna go through smoothly without jamming up the printer roller because that's the last thing you want is to break your printer. Now, if you've already chosen a printer to print your greeting card and if you don't have the budget or don't plan on buying a new printer and you found out that it doesn't handle the 100 to 110 pound weight then you can always try feeding it one by one at first like the goal is to just get your business started rather than getting caught up on all the details of course you can also compromise a little bit on lower weight paper like 90 pound is totally acceptable too the second thing to consider is the texture like I said, I'm gonna show you four different categories of cardstock, but it really depends on your own preference and what works for your art and design. And that leads me to the third thing. Most of my greeting card is printed with my watercolor or ink art. And I've chosen the cardstock that I think my art looks best on, but what works for me doesn't mean it will work for you. So something to keep in mind is what card will your design look the best on. If you have a very versatile type of design that looks good on all cards, then it will simplify the process a lot more for you. But if you have a medium like watercolor, you'll notice that it doesn't print on every single type of cardstock equally. It is not an equal opportunity medium. So let's now get into the paper types. So the first type of cardstock I'm gonna show you is the classic white cardstock. This is the most basic type of cardstock and one that you would most commonly find at any paper store. This is 100 pound and I've also included the recycled version because if you look up close, the recycled version has nice speckle toe on it in detail when you look up close, which I think is a nice touch if you are making cards out of your calligraphy or hand lettering or anything with a limited color palette and design. But you're printing art on the cardstock like mine, I think it can be a little distracting and it depends on the type of art, line art could work as, or black and white art could work well. 
but I just want to get this one out of the way first because it is the most common. And the reason why I'm not printing my art on this paper is I feel like the watercolor gets a little muted when I print on this cardstock. This is not like the matte paper that I print my art prints on, so it does compromise on the quality of my art somewhat. The second option is the classic white felt. This is 110 pounds, which is my ideal weight. Uh, I really like this card because if you look up close, it has a nice felt-like texture. I don't know if it really looks like the felt fabric, but to me, it reminds me a lot of the cold press watercolor paper that I use to paint a lot of my watercolor paintings on it. So I thought they would, this would work great to print my art. And it did for a while, but the reason why I switched out of this is because when I started printing multiple sheets at a time, sometimes I guess the texture is just rough enough that sometimes it catches friction between the sheets. So I didn't want to have to stand by the printer and babysit my printing process when I'm printing you know, 10, 20 pages at a time. But I do think that the color reproduction on this paper is great and the texture gives it a nice premium feeling. So it's not like any other know card that people would buy at the store it can help you stand out a little bit if you are printing art on this just make sure to do a test print and also make sure that your printer can handle the weight the third option is a bright white linen here i have three weight options 80 110 and 130 because why not this is what i ultimately settled on for my watercolor greeting cards so this card is printed on a linen 110 pound cardstock. It's thick enough that it leaves a good impression and it's still you know, easy to score and cut. It's also super bright white, so most of my art doesn't have a full page background on it. So it's nice for the art to just pop really well. And the texture is subtle enough that it doesn't affect the way it's going through the auto, the auto feeder of my printer. Basically, you just want to make sure your printer can handle the weight and multiple sheets of this cardstock. Otherwise, it's pretty much a deal breaker unless you plan on printing sheet by sheet individually forever, which is not a scalable option. And the fourth and last option I'm going to present is the Bright Y Cotton 92 Pound. 92 is very specific. I don't know why that is the case, but anywhere between 92 to 100 is, feels very similar to me. So if your printer can't handle 110, 92 is totally sufficient. Let me just compare a bright white linen with a bright white cotton. The cotton has a slight gray tint to it, but obviously if you like it, look at it by itself, it looks white to me. This cotton paper is fibrous to the touch. It makes me think of art prints when I touch this. It feels a little strange to be holding a card with this caliber, I guess. It does feel really nice. I've actually bought letterpress cards that are printed on this cotton paper and it would retail for you know $6 each. It's so nice that you almost don't want to give it away. So I think for letterpress, it's a good fit for on this type of paper. And because of the fibrous texture, Again, going back to the printing issue, um, sometimes it can get caught in the auto feeder because the paper doesn't slide through the feeder as easily due to the fibers. So make sure that your printer can handle that as well. Um, I did some test prints in my watercolor on this. Color just didn't pop as well as the linen or the felt cardstock. So I went against using this, but like I said, if you are a letterpress printer, most likely a non-issue because you're not printing on an inkjet printer. If you're doing your own calligraphy, whether you're handwriting on the cards or you are scanning in your own calligraphy and printing it out, I think that will work great on this cardstock. And if you're doing any other kind of medium like illustration, digital illustration could work well if you are working with more opaque colors. But anything with full gradient or if you're printing a photo on a grading card, I don't think this would be a good fit. I think a glossier surface would be a better fit for photography. Here's the felt white, white linen, the classic white, and the cotton. 
Well, I hope that video was helpful and it didn't add to your analysis paralysis. If by the end of the video you thought, this is way too complicated, I just want to buy a regular classic Y card stock, then I feel like I've done my job as well. One last thing I want to mention about these card stock is that the classic white paper is going to run you the least amount of cost, but the rest aren't that much more expensive. Regular matte white card stock is more accessible across different stores, so you can easily get them on Amazon and you don't have to commit to a larger quantity. As for the other ones, you may have to shop at specialty paper stores. I'll link a couple of them below. But what's good is they give you the option to sample those papers so you can buy these individual sheets and do some test prints on them. I do recommend you doing that. Again, just not to sound like a broken record, but you want to make sure you like how it looks once it's printed with your own art and design. So if you're new to my channel, uh, make sure to check out other videos we have regarding greeting card business. We have one about how to make a card from beginning to end from your home studio. We have one about packaging cards for online orders. And I also have another one about the 10 strategies and advice about selling your own greeting cards. A lot of our YouTube videos are to address questions that we've received in the past videos. So thank you for leaving those questions if you have. And we do appreciate you DMing us on Instagram at Easy Sunday Club, as well as emailing and leaving comments about them. We try to gather the most common asked questions and turn them into video topics that will help more people in the process. So again, thank you for participating in our content creation. If you like this video, we'd appreciate it. You can give it a gentle nudge on the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. See you next time.